to item six, the public questions. Uh, members, Amir Sadir has a question on the scrutiny process. The Leader of the Council will respond after the, after the question. Thank you, Mr Mayor. In the recent local election, over half of all votes cast across the borough were for candidates that do not belong to the governing party. I do not intend to question the legitimacy of those who were indeed correctly elected under the current system and congratulate all councillors on your recent success. However, given that this has resulted in an opposition of only three members and some scrutiny panels with only Conservative membership, what steps will the Council be taking to ensure that acts in the interests of all residents, that proposals are adequately debated and that decisions are subjected to proper scrutiny? I've got to ask all members, did you all hear that? Yes. Now, the Leader of the Council, Council Beasley, will respond to the question. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and I thank uh, Mr Sade for his question. Um, and uh, once I've delivered a response, uh, Mr Mayor, I do have a written copy uh, which Mr Sade can take with him, uh, which I will give to uh, the Mace. Um, I'd like to uh, set out the roles and functions of councillors which are detailed in the Council's constitution as follows. Uh, and these state that all councillors must together be the makers of overall policy, represent and speak up for their communities, deal with individual casework and speak up for citizens, balance different interests within their ward and represent it as a whole, be involved in council decision making, be available to represent the council on other bodies, and finally, to maintain the highest standards of conduct and ethics. The council has recently undertaken a review of its overview and scrutiny function, and the new structure was implemented following the elections. The changes to the structure were intended to assist the council in upholding the following principles of effective scrutiny as set out by the Centre for Public Scrutiny and better meet its legal requirements for scrutiny in accordance with the relevant legislation. Uh, and these are as follows. Uh, firstly, to provide critical friend challenge to executives as well as external authorities and agencies. Secondly, to reflect the voice and concerns of the public and its communities. Thirdly, to take the lead and own the scrutiny process on behalf of the public. And fourthly, uh, to make an impact on the delivery of public services. Set out in the Council's constitution are the general functions of the overview and scrutiny panels, the roles of panels in assisting with the development and review of Council policies and their scrutiny functions. The overview and scrutiny process rules within the Council's constitution state that the aims and principles of independent and effective scrutiny of executive functions means that the use of the party whip is inappropriate to any agenda item and vote on any overview and scrutiny panel. In addition, I would highlight the call-in process, which is the exercise of overview and scrutiny statutory power to review a cabinet or executive decision which has been made but not carried out. As indicated, the relevant legislation and the Council's constitution provides a framework to ensure that the issues that have been raised uh, can be satisfactorily addressed. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Peter.